Oh, by the way, speaking of that doesn't work for me, brother, that may have been what the entire in-ring wrestling community told QT Marshall. I, I make a joke here. I'm sorry, QT. I don't mean to, to throw you out like that, but QT Marshall is apparently on his way back to All Elite Wrestling. According to an, a report on Fightful Select, Marshall and AEW have worked out whatever their previous issues were, and he's going to be back in his role backstage in the vice presidential role, which he apparently carried with him the last time around. But... It is noted that he will not be returning in any sort of on on screen capacity as an in ring talent. So, Tom, you know he wanted to be in the ring more. We saw him form his little group, and he was out there. He's worked in Mexico for AAA. He was there at the last big AAA show that they had down there, but apparently, maybe uh, not getting the interest that he may have wanted to be involved uh, in the ring with, with other places, but he's going to be back in AEW. Um, any thoughts on uh, QT? I, I was surprised just because of how recently he left and the circumstances under it. He said that it was time you know, for him to go all in, which I thought, honestly, I thought he was going to end up in the WWE or NXT or some sort of role there. But Makes sense apparently, because of obviously his friendship with Cody Rhodes and the background that he does have training guys and, and being a mentor and trying to take on that role. He's been doing that actually for years for those who do not know. I mean, going back, you know, well into the ROH days, you know, way back. And if I'm QT Marshall, I mean, at some point, right, like money – Money should matter. We're in this as professional wrestlers. There, somebody told me that I could be in the back and still involved in a vice presidential capacity with AEW and not have to take bumps. And if I want to go wrestle in AAA again, I can. And if I want to go wrestle in turnbuckle championship wrestling, I can. You know, maybe while he was training in his off time, maybe he got a an injury. Or something, or maybe something happened in his life that made him reconsider going all in on just wrestling. Who knows? But I hardly view it as a downgrade for QT Marshall to end up back with AEW. Certainly not. And he's pushing forty years old if he's not already. I know he's you know, he's gotta be in his late thirties, and I'm sure like a lot of guys, he does not want to be out of the ring. He probably feels as though he never got his due because of, of the time that he was coming up. And even though he's been, you know, a wrestler on TV technically before, you know, I bet you he thinks he can do more and give more uh, to to fans out there and, and accomplish more in his in-ring career. But you're exactly right. As you push this point, as you go out there and you look at the landscape, yeah, it's got to be great to be able to go down to AAA or go down to Puerto Rico for WWEC or go to some of these indies out there and, you know, and have a good time. But to not then to have a fallback, which is what a job with AEW provides you working in a vice presidential role backstage, you know, probably I don't want to say if cooler heads prevailed or anything like that, but whatever their issues are, I'm glad for his sake that they're all ironed out because, as you mentioned, you know, your bump card at some point, even even if you're Sting, will eventually run out, and, you know, at some point here. And, you know, him being back in a role and not being on TV, I think is a good thing here, too, because, again, you know, I have nothing against QT, but the attempts that they made with QTV and some of the things that they tried to do, you know, they didn't work, you know, for him. And we see where Harley, I don't know if Harley Cameron's in a better position now than she was before, but like, you know, nothing came from that group and it only did damage to Powerhouse Hobbs. What is Harley Cameron doing? I'm apparently it's, breaking up uh, uh, the, your your boy there. Uh, the 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 cool hand Ange, cool hand Ange, and uh, and uh, Ruby Soho. She's one of the wildest characters I've seen in <laughs> recent memory. And she was a team with Mariah May at some point back in the day. Can you imagine those two together? <laughs> Seriously, can you imagine those two as a tag team? I'm surprised Stardom didn't take both of them at the same time. I mean, maybe we'll see that here eventually. <laughs> two lunatics. In, in two absolute lunatics. 
And, and Tony Storm's a lunatic, and, and she's going to be on Tonight Show. We should probably get to Tonight Show, which is taking place at the HEB Center in Cedar Park, Texas, live tonight on TBS, AEW Dynamite. Number one contenders match? I'm not going to say anything about rankings during this. Don't worry. Adam Copeland against Daniel Garcia. Non-title Texas death match. International champion Orange Cassidy against Matt Taven. I want to come back to that in a minute, Tom, because I want your thoughts on that stipulation. The Young Bucks, Matthew and Nicholas against a top flight. John Moxley against Dax Harwood. Maybe everybody's going to be attacked by a luchador. You never know. Willow Nightingale against Sky Blue. We'll hear from Hangman Adam Page, Swerve Strickland, and AEW champion Samoa Joe. And yes, the debut of Tony Storm's Wet Ink feature. Texas Death Match. Tom, I know it's 2024. We have matches to have matches. And we are in Texas, so there's that. And no, Texas Death Matches don't exactly mean what they used to. But with that said, you think you want to blow the Texas Deathmatch stipulation on Orange Cassidy or Matt and Matt Taven for this on basically a week's build? Uh, or is the Texas Deathmatch a stipulation that should be held in some sort of uh, regard or, or in some sort of rare air and you just don't throw it out there for a, a Wednesday dynamite? That's something that should be a stipulation match on a pay-per-view. Maybe if it was any other state, but Texas sucks. Oh, are you kidding me? What do you hold it in such revere that you hold it off? Well, you, I mean, I'm no talking way. about the, the Burn years this and stipulation years of... into the ground. This has been a this stipulation has been bastardized over the years, anyways. What exactly are we gonna get tonight? Is it gonna be the Texas death match where you have to incapacitate the guy, and then wait 30 seconds for him to wake up and? pin him or whatever it was i don't even remember like what dory funk senior back in the day with with matches that went 74 falls my guess is that this is a way to have a bunch of shenanigans involving the best friends in the united kingdom and the easiest way to do that is to throw in a stipulation and hey we're in texas so a texas death match makes more sense than a lumberjack match or uh, just random no DQ. Why not make it a Texas death match? Okay, well, devil's advocate, why not just have an Austin street fight then? Why have a Texas death match, which, again, is supposed to, in theory, be something other than just some hardcore match? It's supposed to have a little bit of cachet to it. It's supposed to be a blow-off to a feud, is it not? At least historically, that's what it's been about. It's 2024, brother. I know. You're, you're moving too slow. I know. You got to pick up with the times. Well, Cassidy and Taven are going to be doing that. It has been a – and look, I guess I shouldn't say it's been a week's build here either. I mean, they have had, you know, nonstop the Undisputed Kingdom plucking away at Orange and, and all of his people and best friends as we lead into this Roderick Strong Orange Cassidy international title match that we have coming up and surely regardless of what happens here we're still probably going to have Orange Cassidy at least I would assume we would be having Orange Cassidy and Mike Bennett coming up here at some point too but Matthew and Nicholas the young bucks made their uh heel Mike, re what yes, if sir? what if yes. they're about to put away Orange Cassidy and then the coin drops I don't think it's happening. I think if you're going to do that, you wait for Adam Cole to come back at fully healed out of that wheelchair, and then he does something, and then you bring Okada in. I think uh, and this is no offense to anybody involved right now. Not the way to bring in Okada. Probably not the peak way to be bringing in Okada right now to tie him into this. But, I mean, he could be, look, it, uh, Okada's going to be really interesting as it goes along, too, if he does sign with AEW to see exactly what position he's in and to see who he feuds with first. Because I know there's a lot of people that, you know, could see him going different directions, but some may not like this. Him coming in as a at the help uh, to help Chris Jericho against Takeshita and Hobbs and the rest of Callus's army. I mean, is that too much uh, of a crazy thought, Tom? I think you debut Okada. 
and you debut them solo and you put them into a big singles program right off the bat. That's what I think, Mike. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you? WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never You'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.